been reporting uh, throughout the morning that a lot of the evacuation centers have been full to capacity. Oceanside High School has said, listen, you can't come here anymore. We're full, but there are some new options this morning for you. Yeah, actually, during the course of this fire, they had to move evacuation centers as well because they set one up and the fire would start heading straight yeah. forward and those they evacuate those people to a new center. Overnight, Palomar College in San Marcos opened up as a brand new evacuation center about 2 o'clock this morning. We want to get to 10 News anchor Jim Patton because he is there live and he's been trying tracking the progress there in terms of people coming in and, and uh, being safe and comfortable. Hey, Jim, what are you seeing there now? Yeah, good morning, Virginia. We are meeting people, the evacuees, as they're kind of trickling in this morning. And in fact, we're joined by a young couple, Eleonora and Henry, and little Henry here. And so, Eleonora, tell us as we share these stories, what was your experience? How did you find out you needed to evacuate? Well, we were waiting at home and watching the news, and we finally heard the police officer go, go around with the loudspeaker. And the, the driving down the street with a loudspeaker yes. saying what exactly? Uh, mandatory evacuation and don't go near the 76. What's that like to hear something like that? For me, it's extremely scary. I've, I'm new. We're very new here, and I've never been experience anything like this so we just kind of go with the flow <laughs> gotcha where are you guys from um, well i'm originally from chicago all righty and so fairly new to san diego yes it is welcome so. to southern california it's a, it's huh? a warm welcome yeah no. <laughs> a warm welcome <laughs> no pun intended maybe i'm not sure there but uh so henry from your standpoint what's this been like it's it's and been um, i well which i hear the <laughs> officers you, saw, you heard the officers <laughs> Yeah. Did you hear the officers go by with the loudspeaker? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And what did they say? They said. They said. We have to get somewhere safe. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. for sure. How are you doing this morning, Henry? How is it going for you? How are Good. You? Yeah. <laughs> are you ready to get some sleep, maybe? Yep. Yep. <laughs> sounds sounds pretty good. So uh, back to Big Henry here. Uh, the experience in terms of having to evacuate. You're here with your family. What's this been like for you? It, it's um, been hectic running around trying to find somewhere to actually go, um, get some sleep. But as long as my wife and son are safe, I mean, we're, we're okay. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much thank for you. being so gracious and hanging out with us for sharing your experience this morning. And have a great day ahead, okay? As best as can be. Thank you. All righty, so we're here at Palomar College. This is one of the new centers opening up. There's also a new center in Escondido that has room, and that's where people are being sent. They actually went to the Oceanside Center and said that they were turned away, and they were sent here. This will ha handle 350 people as we go throughout the day, and there's plenty of room right now, so be aware. Reporting live in San Marcos, Jim Patton, 10 News. Hey, Jim, just a quick question. And uh, could little Henry be yes. more precious than that? <laughs> My goodness. Um, you know, for a lot of, <laughs> right, he's just adorable. A lot of families, of course, yes. are so anxious about their homes, right? So they're, they're in the centers and they're thankful to be able to go there and be safe, but they're wondering what's happening to my house. Uh, have people there talked about how that process works, when they'll be told, uh, and how they are, obviously not yet, but how they're told when they can go back and check and see if their home is even still standing? You know, we did talk to one couple about that, like, what do you know about what's happening around your house? And they said, you know, literally, we're just in the dark. We don't know what the situation is. And uh, I just went through this with family up in Northern California who lost a home in the Santa Rosa fire, and it was the same thing. They didn't know whether their house had been burned down for two weeks until oh. after the fire because of the devastation up there. And it just took so long for crews to finally get into those areas because it's not just a concern over logistics and, and finding out you know which house burned but you can't go in because you can't uh, you're worried about the chemicals that have to be taken care of and all of the hazardous materials that have to be dealt with before you can start to let people back in how they finally did it though was they took um, aerial photos of the um, area that burned and they put those aerial photos up for people and they said wherever you see what looks like a white block that means your house is gone because that means it's ash and it's no longer a, a structure. Wow. So that's how they finally found out that their house was lost. Oh my All goodness. right, Jim, thank you very much.